Hi everyone, I'd like to introduce you to the new structural features of Revit 2021. My name is Lawrence Hooker and I'm a technical consultant at Excitec. I have some great new features to show you in relation to concrete reinforcement modelling and also some extended functionality with the steel fabrication workflows. Let's begin with a focus on the concrete modelling. Autodesk now provide us with a new standard shape that we can use to model chairs, shape code 98. This is typically used by contractors to control the spacing between layers of reinforcement and now can form an integral part of our models and help us with reinforcement coordination and modelling. So let's take a look at how we'd place one of these shapes down. I'll start by selecting my host, which is the floor. On the ribbon, I'll select rebar. In our shape browser, you'll now notice the standard shape, rebar shape 98. On the context ribbon, you'll see that we have near cover reference selected, and also the placement method is parallel to cover. As I now move my cursor over the screen, you can now see the chair being previewed. Let's go ahead and place this chair down. Now, just like all reinforcement, we need to make this visible in the 3D view. So I'll go ahead and select my shape code 98. In the properties palette, I can select view visibility states. And here, we're going to select this to be view unobscured and also view as a solid. And you can now see our new shape has now been previewed. However, you'll notice it's in the wrong orientation. So if I press the space bar, you can now see that will orientate the shape. We can use the shape handles to adjust the length of our chair. And once we have it in the right sort of area, we can use the properties palette to fine tune the dimension. So here I'm going to type in 350. And you can now see our chair is now modelled. Let's now take a closer look at this chair in the 3D view. So to make it easier to see what we're looking at, I'm just going to go ahead here and create a section box around the chair. And you can now see the chairs displayed. Let's now take a look at some rebar constraints. So I'm just going to set this to uh, a random value of 150 here. And you can now clearly see that the chair isn't actually sitting on the second bottom layer of rebar. So we're going to need to use some reinforcement constraints to actually set this. So let's select the Edit Constraints tool. And you can see here that I can select the bottom face of our um, rebar shape and also the bottom face of the second layer of reinforcement. So here, if I set this to zero, you'll probably notice here it's halfway into the uh, second layer of rebar. So we don't want that. So here I can just type in six and you can now see the rebar and the chair is in the correct location. Now, there has been some improvements to reinforcement constraints, and we'll look at those in a separate area. OK, so our chair is now in the correct position. Another thing we can do here is override the hook lengths on our chair. So with the chair selected, you'll now notice in the properties palette, we have this new function called override hook lengths. If I select this, you'll probably now notice that the dimensions C and D are now available. Just so you can see the difference between that, you can now see they're grayed out, now they're available. And it means that each instance of a chair can have different values. So in this case here, I could perhaps type in 300 and 300, and you can now see those legs change length. Okay, another useful area for that will be for things like uh, closed links. So here, what I'm going to do is just take the section box off. Okay, perhaps we'll now just maximize our view here in the 3D. And we'll go and look at this beam over here. Okay, so if I select one of these links, i.e. shape code 51, once again here, you'll notice that my C and D dimensions are grayed out. But again, I can say override hook lengths. Now, if I do this and I wanted to extend the hook lengths, you can now see just for this range of rebar, I can actually change these hooks. So in here, I'm going to say 250 and 250. And you can now see the hooks have elongated. But again, just for this range of rebar, 
Let's now take a more detailed look at placing multiple constraints. So you can see here that this U-bar is constrained very nicely to the top and bottom layers. But if we travel a little bit further along the slab, you can see that this U-bar hasn't quite got the correct location. So let's now use our multi-constraint rebar tool to get this U-bar in the right place. So we'll begin by selecting the U-bar. And up on the context ribbon, we can select Edit Constraints. My first task here is to select the constraint target, which is the plane here of the U-bar. My second target is this blue bar here. And you can see now that the two bars are placed together. If I just rotate the view around, you can see that actually they're on their tangential faces, but this bar, this U bar is still too high. Now, normally here, I'd have to escape the command to proceed. But now what I can do is I can actually select the new plane on the U bar and then the same plane perhaps on this blue bar here. And again, the constraints placed in and I can set my constraint there to zero. And then finally, we can move up to the last plane, the top plane here and the top plane on this blue bar. And once again, set the constraint to zero. And finally, I can select the green tick. And you can see there that we've very efficiently selected that U bar and constrained it to the top and bottom bars in one single command. So very, very useful. Before moving into mesh reinforcement, let's just take another look at placing out our chair reinforcement with a path. So we're just going to go back to level one. And of course, rather than placing out the chairs one by one and then creating our own range, we can just go ahead and use the structural path reinforcement. So here we can select the edge of our slab. Notice in the properties padded here, our face is set to top. We have a spacing of 1200. The primary length of the bar is 300, which will be the width of the chair. You can see here that we've got shape code 98, which is our chair, of course, and our primary bar type H10. So here we can just go ahead and sketch our chair. So what I'm doing here is sketching the path. Once we sketch the path, we can just go ahead and select the green tick. In the properties padded, with the path reinforcement still selected, we can edit the view visibility states once again. And again here in our 3D view, we can view unobscured and view as a solid. So let's now take a look at that in the 3D view. And you can now see our path reinforcement. And of course, again, I could just go ahead and constrain that in the same way as you saw with the U-bar. OK, so let's now move on to some fabric improvements. Fabric reinforcement can now be visualized in 3D and also appears correctly now in sections. So let's go to the level one plane. And in this example, we'll just place out one sheet, but of course we could put a fabric area over the whole slab or wall if we wanted to. But in this case, as I say, we'll just place out a sheet. Okay, so we'll place the sheet somewhere in here. And then we'll go to our 3D view. Now in the 3D view, this is how the fabric used to look previously. You could see it would just show up as um, single lines. If I change the display here to wireframe, that's how it would have normally looked. But now what we can do, we can select the fabric and just like any other type of reinforcement, we can go to view visibility states. And here we can say view unobscured and view as a solid. And there's our new reinforcement shown. So that's a quite a big improvement for display purposes and also coordination. Um, obviously, you can see with this um, fabric here, we have flying in. So we could obviously check that the lap's correct and everything is working correctly at these lap areas. Let's also look at a section through the fabric as well. So we'll create a section somewhere about here. Let's just change the depth of section. So in older releases of Revit, what would have happened here is you would have seen the top bars, but you wouldn't have necessarily seen this bottom bar here. The fix would have been to have changed this to wireframe. But of course, now because the bars viewed as solid, you can see both layers of the mesh very effectively. Let's now move away from concrete and take a look at some of the new features relating to steel modeling and connections. We'll start by looking at placing structural stiffeners a new connection type for Revit 2021. So here you can see a small snippet of some steel frame. 
And if we take a look at these connections here, you can see that I have two structural openings and then I have stiffeners placed either side of the openings. Before we go ahead and place some additional stiffeners, let's look at the properties of the stiffener. So we can select the stiffener and in the properties palette, I'll select edit type. In the type properties dialog box, of course, you can zoom up on the connection and have a look at the connection in a bit more detail. And then we can edit the parameters. So you can see here that we can set the plate thickness. Here we can set the plate alignment. We have an offset of the plate and we can do the same for the parameter set two on the other side. So in this case, you can see I've got a double stiffener either side of the uh, web. We then can set up our center marks chamfers and also patterning as well. So if I want to put a number of stiffeners down a beam at a regular spacing, of course I can do that. So they're the connection types that we can set. So let's now go ahead and take a look at how we'd actually place one of these stiffeners. So I'm just gonna go ahead and place a structural stiffener in a random location here. So to do this, we can select the connection button and in the properties palette, in the type selector, we'll go ahead and locate the stiffener. And the process then is we select the element that we want to place the stiffener on and then select enter or space or finish. And here I select a point where the stiffener needs to be located. Now you'll notice at the minute that I'm just using the nearest spacing. And you can now see that Revit's background processing and now the stiffener is complete. So I'll now go ahead and open up the stiffener cross section in here and you can see our newly placed stiffener. So if I select this, I can actually now move this into the correct location. So what I'm going to do here is uh, pick up the stiffener from the middle point. Um, let's say that we want to just initially place it there, for example. And now what I can do is go to move again. And here I'm going to move that a precise distance away. Let's say 450. And you can see the stiffener is now placed out. Another new feature is the ability to dimension these plates from the center line. So I'm now going to take um, a dimension from the centers of these stiffeners and then place that dimension out on screen. And you can obviously see that's now reading 450. So that's a very useful and convenient way of placing a stiffener and then obviously having it at a precise distance. However, if we want to place more than one stiffener, we can actually then place an array of these. So let's now take a look at that process. So I'll switch back to the 3D view. This time we're going to go to connections again. Now here I need to edit type and duplicate this. So what we'll do is we'll click edit type and we'll now go ahead and make a duplication of this. So here we'll put um, four times stiffener like so. Uh, we'll click edit to modify the parameters. And if I go to the pattern area here, you can see here that I can put in uh, four of these. So I put four in here. Obviously, now we can set up our centers. So here I'm going to say that I want um, a meter between the centers in there. In fact, let's change that to 500. And we'll go ahead and click OK. In the type properties, we can click OK again. And we can now go through the process of actually placing out these stiffeners. So using a very similar process, I select the member. Right mouse and choose finish selection. Then I can select the starting point for my stiffeners, perhaps here. And you'll now see that Dynamo goes ahead and places out four of those stiffeners at 200 centers. So let's move on to another new feature, which is really useful for all sorts of aspects. Um, this isn't really structurally related. This really would be um, for any Revit user. What I'm gonna do here is just switch to a sheet. Okay, and you can see in this sheet here, I have a number of sections actually set up. Um, if you take a look at the orientation of the text, you'll notice that the text is now aligned to my section mark. Now that never used to be possible before. The text would always stay horizontal regardless of the rotation of the section head. So how's that working? Well, let's just take a look at that. If I go into this section here and select it, um, if we edit type here, we can see here that this is used in the family um, section head field section. So if we have a look up here, this will be M section head field. So we'll go ahead and edit this one. Same principle applies. You can see here, we've got this uh, new parameter, rotate text with component. We'll load that back into our project and we'll click overwrite the existing version. 
And again, you can see that that's rotated as well. And I think the same goes for call outs as well. So if I go to the view ribbon and we're placing a call out like so. Obviously now the, uh, the location of the text would again always remain horizontal. But again, if we edit the call out head, we could change that to be aligned to the bubble. OK, so there's some of the new features of Revit 2021. I hope you found this video useful and look forward to seeing you again soon in the future. Thanks very much.